Uh, can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Okay, although from my end, I can't hear anyone, uh, but it's good. I can see you more or less. I can see a uh, good number of uh, people here. Uh, good morning, and I'm glad that you're here. And I was speaking with uh, Engineer Carpina earlier, and then explained to me uh, the systems that you have uh, placed, that you have uh, placed in your school to facilitate learning, you know. And now, uh, of course, with this uh, new times that we are in, the, with the pandemic, the lockdown, we are in a different situation, you know, unprecedented. We don't know, you know what to do initially. And that's why, you know, I have been, I would say I've given talks on stress management to uh, workers, teachers, students, like, I don't know, maybe 10 times or 15 times already. So hopefully that uh, you'll get something from this. Let me just share with you uh, my slide. I was in Taitung, um, I'm not sure it was like maybe a year and uh, maybe two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, two years probably I was there, I was giving a talk to the teachers on the art of listening. It was a very nice experience. I saw, you know, your students there and then your facilities. Okay, so for now, I'll be giving this talk on stress management while working from home. And uh, I have been told recently that you have been uh, going to school, which is very good. You know, that's, that's something that a lot of people would want to do, to be able to get out of their homes and to go to their workplaces. Uh, although there are some who would still prefer to work from home, but it depends on the nature of their work. You know? But a good number of people would rather go out of their homes and you know, uh, go back to their workplaces. So this is a brief outline of today's talk. So just to discuss what stress is. And then some causes of stress, which are, I would say, caused by our thinking or our thoughts. So we'd have here ruminations, irrational thoughts, negative self-talk, because a good number of um, stressors, or at least how we react to stressors, are through our thinking. You know? I'll discuss also about the cognitive model, how our thinking would affect um, our actions and our feelings, okay? And then the work from home scenario that, that we are in right now, so this is a, I'll give a brief presentation that in coping with stress, okay? So this today's outline. And I want you to keep two things in mind, no? While you're listening to this talk. One is um, know how to cope with stress. You know, that's what we're doing right now. And then that's the second item. And the first item is to identify your stressors. Of course, if you're able to identify our stressors, then we will know how to cope with our stress. And, uh, okay, first, uh, about stress. Mm, well, you see here a uh, Band-Aid you know, being placed in the index finger uh, of someone. We know what to do when we get sick. For example, um, we take paracetamol or if we get a cut, you know that we have to wash it and put the Band-Aid. But uh, what happens... Do we know what to do if, let's say, we're emotionally uh, wounded? I would say, you know, we're stressed. Uh, sometimes, you no, know, uh, we even make it worse. You know, if let's say we have uh, someone, let's say, a wife or a husband who uh, probably misinterpreted what we said, and you know, we end up, you know, making a big thing out of uh, something that's small, that could already be a source of stress for us. And uh, we don't know how to handle them at times, you know. Now, in, in terms of stress, we'll have here a definition of what stress is. You know, parang, yeah, it's already something that I experience. I don't think that stress is, uh, you know, I need to define it. But it's good to, to see uh, the mechanics, the underlying principles behind stress, you know. So it's a, it's a term used to describe the physical, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral responses to events that are appraised as threatening or challenging. So I use the word threatening or challenging um, because there's a nice way to uh, put it. There. I mean, um, it's our choice, you know. Our, our, we can perceive stress as something that's threatening or something as challenging because, you know, one could find, let's say, speaking in public a challenge. Uh, while another person could see it's something that's stressful, you know. So, again, uh, I'll, I'll explain later how we can 
make uh, certain stressful events um, work for us, how, how it can be beneficial for us. Okay. Now, stress is our body's reaction to the demands of the world. So the cause of stress is stressors. I've mentioned this earlier. So stressors are events or conditions in our surroundings that may trigger stress. Our body responds to stressors differently depending on whether the stressor is new or short-term, which is what we call acute stress, or whether the stressor has been around for a long time, which is chronic stress. So I got this from Mayo Clinic, the website of Mayo Clinic. And uh, we'll talk more about acute stress and chronic stress. Okay, so here are examples of acute and chronic stress. On the left, you have acute stress, which means, let's say, you're going to present at work. Uh, or you have concerns about an upcoming event, you know, organizing, let's say, this uh, uh, faculty development, and that could be a form of stress, or um, recent argument with a friend or with a spouse, running late or, struck, uh, or stuck in traffic, you know, although now I don't know if people uh, get stuck in traffic, you know, or, so these are acute stress. So these are, um, you know, uh, it's not sustained. In terms of time, we, we see that chronic stress compared to acute stress, you know, chronic stress is prolonged. There's an element of, of a period of time, such as, you know, have, being in a bad relationship. It's not like, you know, presentation at work and after presentation of work, you're done. You know, a bad relationship is something that you carry with you until you end that bad relationship. Or being in a stressful job or having, being a toxic home environment or living in high crime area, or if you're not able to sleep well. So poor sleeping habits, that could be a form of chronic stress or ongoing health problems. So those are, let's just see two types of stress. So it's good to identify what are the acute stress that I encounter, you know, in my work, or what are the chronic stressors that I have, you know, so that, you know, we can, once you're able to identify them, then we can do something about it. Now, we have two kinds of stress. What, what this is like the good kind of stress or the other one is the bad kind of stress. That's how they were uh, somehow divided. So when you say EU stress, uh, I think it comes from the Greek word EU, which means good. Yeah. So it's the pressure that mobilizes us into action when we are positively engaged with a problem. So I got this from Daniel Goldman. And then this stress is the effects of an unpleasant and undesirable stressor. But let me just give you one example that could either become a use stress or a distress. I'll give it an example later. I just give um, examples of use stress and distress first. So, so when you get a promotion or if someone gets married or you're entrusted with a huge responsibility, that's a good kind of stress because it moves us to, into action, actions that enable us to grow personally because, you know, when you given a promotion, we have more responsibilities, you know, we become more responsible and, you know, we grow in certain skills like interpersonal relationship, delegation, but like we just had time management, for example, or getting married. So it's a huge responsibility forming a family, but something that's good that, that you know, you feel good about it also. Now, this stress, uh, well, this is when we have negative um, feelings, like, you know, when there are calamities or death of a loved one, or when we encounter rude people or losing our cars. You see here that it could be like a spectrum, you know. I mean, of course, the calamities, the effects of calamities or death of a loved one is not comparable with, let's say, being uh, with rude people, ex experiencing rude people or losing our cars, though both are, you know, forms of distress, but one could be more extreme than the other. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the example that I'll give you. Um, you're familiar with uh, Kobe Bryant, right? Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. Uh, these are basketball players who, who you know, I really admire them. Uh, well, initially, I'm oh, sorry. I didn't like, um, what's his name now? Kobe Bryant, because for the Kobe Bryant fans out there, you know, because it, to me, he seems to be so arrogant you know, at that time. But later on, you know, there's a change in heart. Uh, also, it changed in heart in me because I started to admire him because, you know, when I saw him take that last second shot and it got in, I go, wow, this guy has, you know, like uh, very, very focused, you know. If I were in that situation, 
I would have fumbled and I won't definitely have made that shot. Uh, so you see, it's this one event of, you know, throwing the, the basketball there. And then it's the dying seconds of the game. It, it will determine whether you'll win or lose. But he's able to do it because he sees it as a challenge, you know. So you see, let me read first what's in front of, of us right now. Perceiving a stressor as a challenge instead of as a threat, instead of a threat, makes coping with the stressor or the harm it may already have caused more likely to be successful. So whereas perceiving it as an embarrassment or imagining failure or rejection is more likely to lead to increased stress reactions, negative emotions, and an inability to cope well. Another example that I can mention is, uh, well, this is an example for those of you who have read The Cognitive Model. Um, if you have read the book of Judith Beck, or if you're familiar with Cognitive Behavioral, uh, cognitive behavioral Therapy of Dr. Aaron Beck. So it talks about uh, uh, three students. Let's say um, that these three students are the students of uh, Engineer Carpina. He's teaching math for, or physics, for example, he's teaching them physics. And then one student says, oh, wow, I really like physics, you know. So I'm going to start reading, you know, the book that Sir Carpina has given us. And he would start reading the book. The other two didn't like physics because it had a lot of maths, no. So one said, oh, I don't like physics. I don't like math. I don't even want to touch the book that we have right now. And then the third person, the third student says, uh, you know, I also don't like physics. I don't like math, you know. But, you know, this book probably will help teach me appreciate physics even more. Maybe I'll be able to understand it better if I read the book. So you see, both this second and the third students, um, they don't like math. But, you know, one thinks of it as, I don't want to touch it. Well, the other ones, you know, give it a chance. Probably, you know, uh, this might help me, uh, you know, uh, learn physics. Now, let's look at the second person who doesn't want to touch the book. Can he take on that mentality of the third one? Can he say, maybe, yeah, maybe the third person, the third student is right. Maybe I can give it a chance. And at least he'll start reading the book. And then, you know, for all we know, probably that book will really help him appreciate it, you know? So if you put that in, 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 in another context in our lives, um, are there moments where it, there are certain challenges, certain stressors in our lives that we can change our mindset, our perspective. That instead of looking at it as a threat, it could be you know, seen as a challenge, probably. You know? If, let's say, we're given assignments, uh, well, this is uh, also something that uh, you know, I experienced before. Why am I being given this responsibility? I'm not that you know, uh, capable, I think. You know? And sometimes, you know, People around us know better. Probably people see in us certain potentials. And, you know, I heard someone say, no, you know, if you think that you're not qualified for a position you're given, just take it because, you know, these people have seen something in you that probably you have not seen, you know. So taking it as a, you know, as a challenge, you know. Now, below this, I, I can send you a link to this uh, TED Talk. It talks about how a stress can become our friend. You know, parang weird, no? stress becomes our friends. What she says here is that, you know, if, if you, uh, the, I think the, the summary of this is, if you see stress as something that is, um, you know, as a challenge, as something that, you know, will, will uh, move you into action, then health-wise, it will benefit you. Those who suffer physically from stress are those who believe that stress is, um, will affect them adversely physically. So that's, that's the thing. So, I think this is around 17 minutes. I'll uh, send the link. Uh, several links. There are several links that I'll be sending later. You can watch it. Uh, it's, it's interesting. You see, it's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of perspective on stress. Now, going to the question that I raised earlier, I am stressed when? So identify your stressors. Okay, so I am stressed when? What time during the day? Is there like a pattern? Or what events happen? You know, what events precede times that you're stressed? Or let's say at the end of the day, I'm stressed. Or after working, I'm stressed, you know. And what are my stressors? The amount of work that I'm doing, talking with students, you know. And then how can I cope with my stress? This is very important. How do I cope? You know, people have different ways of coping. And it's very good, no? 
to share also ideas. I gave um, uh, the briefing talk, stress management talks to some employees of, uh, of Jollibee. Uh, and uh, because a classmate of mine, mine was working there and he asked uh, our group to give stress management. And then I was asking coping ways of students, you know, what are their uh, ways to, I mean, not students, the employees, what are their ways to cope? Uh, they mentioned singing, fixing their furniture, rearranging uh, their house, uh, cleaning. Uh, so there are a, a lot of ways, uh, you know. Now you see a lot of people who are plantitos. Recently, uh, I was out uh, for seven days and I was surprised that the silly seeds that I planted are now, you know, they're growing. So I'm very happy. I'm a plantito myself now, no? So, how do we cope in stress? Okay. So, um, there was a time when, uh, this is a personal experience, no? Uh, some, yeah, that's probably a year ago. I was, ready, I was doing my dissertation at the moment because I'm doing my dissertation. I was writing. Uh, there was a time that I shouted at someone during lunchtime. And I was shocked because I was not the... I wasn't really that, you know, I, I'm not the kind of person who just like shout at people. Maybe, you know, and I was surprised. So I have to reflect, why did I behave this way? And I had to apologize to that person eventually. And then I realized that was the time when I started transcribing my interviews, when I, when I interviewed uh, people for my dissertation. And transcribing is taxing for me. If you're not used to transcribing, of course, maybe after some time your learning curve, you know, will kick in. But... I wasn't, uh, it was the first time. And then I realized, oh my goodness. So that was why I was stressed and I was easily irritated. Now that helped me uh, prepare myself because the succeeding days I have to be doing that, those transcriptions. And every time I do a transcription, because I do a transcription immediately after my interview. You know? So there's, there are times that you know, I don't have to do some transcription work. So I have to be on guard. I am a... Uh, uh, I, I did transcription now, and let me check myself. Am I feeling irritated, stressed? No. Sometimes it's not so easily, you know, noticeable. But I, I become on guard, so to be careful with what I say, with what people are saying. If I get irritated, okay, I'm irritated now because I know I'm stressed. But normally I don't feel irritated, you know, when people talk about these things, you know. So that's good. That's why it's good to know when we are stressed what our stressors are, and how we can cope with our stress. I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, presentation about rumination, irrational thoughts, negative self-talk. No? So what are these? Let me just uh, discuss with you the cognitive model uh, initially thought of by Dr. Beck, the founder of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. In his first model, he mentioned that you know, our thinking affects our feelings and our feelings affect our behavior. So let's say, um, let's say we hear someone call out our name, uh, and then, oh, our thinking might be, oh no, this person is uh, looking uh, looking for me. So thinking, baka mamaya bigyan niya ako ng trabaho, or maybe this person will ask me to do something. So what is my feeling? I feel like you know, uh, I don't want to. I feel. Elusive, no, I, I, I don't like to go to the person. So the behavior is I will escape, I will go away. So that's the behavior. No? So that's how our thinking affects our feelings and our behavior. So there are a lot of other examples, you know. Uh, but the thing is, our thinking could be wrong. Maybe the person called us to give us a gift, for example, or, you know, sometimes we have made a mistake, no, those, those things, no. So that's, that's the model of Dr. Beck. Thinking affects our feelings and our feelings affect our behavior. But through time, he, was, he developed his, his model and then with, with, with what you have right now in front of you is that the thinking and the feeling, they um, influence each other, you know? And then the feeling and then the behaving would influence each other also and then thinking and the behaving would influence each other, okay? For example, if you feel something good, then you start thinking also something that is good, you know? How about behaving and thinking or behaving and feeling, for example? No? Okay, if you have the chance, go in front of a mirror and then try to smile, force yourself to smile, you'd realize that a certain feeling of lightness, you'd feel a little bit, you know, like a spark of joy there or something there when you see yourself smiling. 
you know so even when there are times that you feel you know uh, sad or probably you force yourself to smile and there's a little bit there you know even let's say you know i'm forcing myself but you notice that small change you know there might be a small change there you know uh you know uh that that, that, that can cause you to feel a little bit better okay so that's that's how this model goes you know now of these three feeling i think is difficult to control because when we're angry it takes us a lot of time to settle down why because our brain is flooded by the chemicals that you know uh, that makes us angry or when we're even happy also you know that's why when some people say that don't uh say things if you're angry because you end up uh, regretting them or when you're very happy avoid making promises that you might not be able to fulfill diba? so if you're very sad also avoid making uh, decisions major decisions no? so that, that that's that's how it is no feeling is not that easy to 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 change behavior uh it's also not that easy Okay, because it has to depend also on thinking and feeling. Eh? But thinking is something that uh, we can, we have uh, a better capacity to change. Remember the story I told you earlier of the three students, no? If you have the mentality of the second student, I don't want to touch this book. And then what if you shift that mentality to, well, yeah, maybe it's good to, for me to try it, no? Try it out first, you know? So that's why I'm focusing now on thinking. So this techniques that I'll be giving are uh, stressors that because of our the way we think. You know. we, for the science teachers here, please correct me if I'm wrong. No? We have uh, cows who are called ruminants. So that's where this word rumination comes from. Ruminants are those animals who have, I think, several um, stomachs. What they do is that they chew um, uh, grass, diba? the cows, they chew grass. And then they swallow it, and then after being stored, I think, for, uh, let's say, further digestion in one stomach, then they, they, they regurgitate it, so it goes up back to their mouth, and then they start chewing it again, and it goes, I guess, to another stomach, you know. So that motion of, you know, uh, chewing over and over again. So rumination is when we think about something over and over again because of the negative impact it has on us. We imagine scenarios, past events. You know, sometimes this could be triggered by certain events that you know uh, lend us to remember those things. And you know, we might be surprised because why am I feeling so negative about this? You know, after so many years or after so many months, I'm still feeling this way. You know, because we have associated feelings with events. You know, even smell. You know, if we smell the let's say home cooked. A dish of our parents and if we somehow smell it somewhere uh, we feel good about it because we have associated uh, emotions also with certain smell sight uh, memories okay events you know and what happens in the rumination is that i could I, I look at it as uh, sliding down a slide you remember when you were young you would slide down no? and then from the top going down you go faster and faster you know and uh, I'm saying that it's like riding a slide because in rumination, what's important is recognition, that you recognize that, hey, I was in this scenario before. I was thinking, of, I, know, I know that I would think these thoughts and I know that if I continue thinking about this past event, I will end up emotionally drained again or angry, you know. The thing is, if from the onset, if we're able to identify that it's a rumination, then stop ourselves. Just like in a slide, if you're at the, at the top of the slide, then, then you realize, oops, I think I have to stop myself from sliding. It's easier to stop yourself from the top. But if you have started rumination and you have, you know, that event did allow it to pass and it's going to be more difficult to stop ourselves from thinking those thoughts, just like in a slide, when we're you know, in the middle of the slide, if we're going down the slide, it's more difficult to stop ourselves because we're moving faster. It's acceleration due to gravity. Sir Philip, no, I think I'm, that's physics. No? So that's rumination. Students call this overthinking. So uh, I think that they're, they're the same, you know, and say, I'm overthinking because they're thinking about the same thing over and over again. Now, we also have irrational thoughts. Now, you, you might ask me, sir, how do we like, you know, uh, 
uh, stop these ruminations or irrational thoughts. No? Uh, well, one thing is uh, later on, uh, I'll, I'll talk about mindfulness, focusing on something. Ah, your guidance counselors can help you on that, you know, to, to um, um, being mindful of things. And also um, trying to see where is this coming from, you know, I mean, to, to reason out with ourselves also. Um, focusing also on things outside us and what we're, what we're supposed to do. Because it's trying to compete, I mean, those folks are trying to compete with our attention. So if you are able to put attention elsewhere, just like when you, you have mindfulness, you're focusing on something, then you know, chances are we could um, avoid those um, ruminations. No? Now we have also irrational thoughts. Now what are these irrational thoughts? I'll, I'll give examples. Thoughts that um, it might appear rational, but they're actually not rational, you know? Like these statements. It is terrible if someone does not like me. At first glance, of course it's terrible. No, I mean, why wouldn't uh, we, we would want to be liked no, by people? But the thing is, what's irrational about it is that, well, someone would always, you know, I, I, I don't like everyone. So someone would probably not like me as well. Diba? And then I must be loved by everyone. The same thing, you know. Why would everyone love you? Or why, why we don't even love everyone, you know? Okay, and then this is the way I was raised, and this is the way I will be. Again, it appears to be, yeah, that's true, no? But the thing is, we forget the concept of human growth. We're capable of also, you know, um, growing even at our age, you know? There's this TED Talk also that said that, uh, you know, uh, we can still grow uh, uh, brain cells, neurons, uh, but not as fast though as before. So they discovered that some parts of our body are capable of, uh, you know, uh, forming uh, neurons. Because right? we believe that we have a fixed number of brain cells, right? But uh, there's some there's this TED talk that I saw, but very few. It's not like you know, as, as that, like we have billions. Right? I think 18 billion, or I don't know how many billion of. Uh, uh, neurons, but this one is like on the hundreds and the thousands, lah. You know? But you know that that they they were capable of still learning, okay. And then I must be perfect with everything I do. Again, you know, we cannot be perfect all the time. You know, the world is always a hostile place. You know, well, it's not. There are times that you know, it's it's also peaceful. Now, how do we, um, uh, well, how do we solve this? First is to be able to identify those irrational thoughts. Are you able to identify those irrational thoughts? First is de determine how am I feeling right now and what's the root of this feeling? And that's somehow difficult for some people. And what I do is that I ask people, you know, when you're emotional, write things down. Write things of whatever comes to your mind, write it down. You know, imagine no one will be reading that, that, that notebook, you know. If you like me, I like notebook, pencil and pen. And then go back to once you have, you know, settled yourself, go back to what you've written and you will notice what you're thinking the way you think. And then once we're able to know, identify how we're thinking, then it will be easier for us to argue with that thinking, to uh, dispute that thinking, to uh, check, challenge those thinking, okay? For example, it is terrible if someone does not like me. Well, I do not like everyone. Why should I be liked by everyone, okay? So what if not ev what if others don't like me? How, how is that important in my life, for example? Okay, so we can challenge those thoughts. Next is, this is the way I was raised, and this is the way I will be. Maybe this is also like, uh, maybe I'm just uh, lazy to change myself or to challenge myself or to, to uh, be inconvenienced, you know, that could be like our excuse. But, you know, my past, for example, this one is to challenge this thought. My past may have influenced who I am right now but I still have control over what I will do. I am responsible for what I will become, you know? So that's it, you have, we have that component. Of course, it did not uh, disregard the fact that, you know, it's true, the past has uh, influenced us, you know? The thing about challenging these thoughts is that we have to remain truthful. We cannot make uh, statements that are not true uh, or statements that could be wrong, because uh, we can say, I will be all right, I will be all right. But the fact is, what if I am not all right? 
You know, what if things don't turn out well? You know, so you have to still be, be truthful with that. Now, whenever that thought comes, na, oh, okay, not everything. I, I, what if I'm not well? Then do something about that. Then what can I do if I'm not well? I can seek out my friend. I can do this. You know, so there's 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 a you no know, sticking to reality. But at the same time, there's a plan. You know. I, I hope that uh, you know I, I can still connect with you. The negative self talk. These are things that we tell ourselves. I can't do this. This is this guy is thinking. I uh, failed in the past. I'm so stressed out. Again, we try to um, challenge those thoughts, those ideas. Sometimes we might tell ourselves, "I am such an idiot," or "I will never succeed in life." Now, how do we refute them? Okay, or how do we challenge them? I made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. Even successful people make mistakes. You know, even you know, very intelligent people they make mistakes. But I guess you know, in some cases, even those who make mistakes they become successful precisely because they made those mistakes, and those mistakes made them even better. They make they, the the mistakes help them become stronger. Okay. So, you know, that, that's something that we can do. That, that, that's, that's a reality. I mean, there are people like that, you know. Then I will never succeed in life. I'm capable of learning, you know. Even if we, uh, we are slow learners, I have some students who are slow learners, but surprisingly, after some time, when they went to college, they become, you know, very, very, they even become dean's lister. I have a student, um, uh, you know, he became the blockhead, but he was in school. He was like, you know, uh, struggling. But sometimes there are, certain th there are certain events that God allows that, you know, s makes a person motivated to study more. So we don't know. You know? So, um, so yon, I'm capable of learning. And then, okay, let's say if we're, if we're not able to uh, achieve our goals, we might say, I will never succeed in life. But, you know, we can also change our goals. Maybe our goals are too lofty. Maybe I have to change it, you know, in something that's easier for me to, to do. Uh, in, in behavior modification, um, it's good to start with small achievable goals and then make the goals a little bit more difficult, you know. Or for example, when I do my dissertation, my goal, uh, I was told that, you know, you have to make, um, I think, four to five pages per day of writing. And I told myself, I don't think I can make four to five pages. I'd start with one lang muna. Or I know one paragraph, just one paragraph. And you know, to my surprise, I was able to make eight pages in that day, just starting off with one paragraph. And you know, I just gave myself okay, just one paragraph, not 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 so much, you know. But of course, you know, you have to balance that with demanding from yourself, you know, now you know you you know what you're capable of doing, you know. So, so again, this one is it depends on on individuals. No? Now I have to talk faster, palano. So work from home. So this is something that's very different now. We have been in this situation for a year, and you know, initially it was really difficult because it's something that we, you know, we are not prepared for. No one was prepared for this. Uh, you know, we have no research before on how to do this. And at that time, I was do I was already doing my dissertation, and I had to step in our guidance office to help students cope. So there's because there are a lot of difficulties. Not only students, I was also seeing teachers, professors. Coping with this scenario, I had a student call me one time. I know him. This guy, you know, from a very good family. Uh, I mean, he he the, the family is doing okay financially because a lot of families, kasi di ba, they, they suffered. But his family is financially okay. The family is okay. He has good parents. He speaks highly of his parents. He's a scholar, in fact. And even if they're financially okay, they're studying. And then... He wanted to talk to me. I was, I have known this guy for a year. We were playing basketball on Sundays, you know. And he started crying. And then, sir, I can't understand what I, why I'm feeling this way. And it's because probably he's lonely because, you know, he's used to talking to a lot of people. But, you know, he has to be inside, you know. And then I told him, you know, sir, is this weird? I go, it might feel weird, you know. But I guess, you know, we are in uh, situations that are, you know, uh, we, we don't know this kind of situation, eh. It's, it's something very foreign to all of us. And I guess the is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. We don't know what's happening. I guess it's a normal uh, reaction because it's, you know. Now, I've been seeing also a lot of students. And then, you know, just mere fact, the, the mere fact that he was talking to me was really very good for, for him because I followed him up the following week and then two weeks after and then a month after and he's okay. 
It's just that he just needed someone to listen to him to talk to. And that's probably one advice that I can give. You know, if, if, if you have someone to talk to, then let's talk to someone. Uh, you know, just, just to share. Sometimes it's just, it's not really the advice that we get. It's just a matter of being able to have someone to genuinely listen to us. At the same time, also, let's open, let's be open to that also. You know, people might want to talk to us, to share things, and to listen to them. Because it's one way for, for them to, you know, to, uh, to let out also what they're feeling. It's one way for us to help them also. So uh, I, I guess that's the, the, the scenario that we have right now is, uh, you know, more or less we are used to it. I mean, we have ways to cope, but still, uh, it's not the normal thing. We're still waiting for the time that, you know, we can go back to, uh, quote unquote, uh, normal things. But I'm glad that you know you're you're starting to go to work. I mean, go there in, in, in your school because that's one of the things that actually I would be suggesting. You know, to help us with our mental health during this this pandemic. Now, this work from home is relatively new. You know, but uh, it, there's also something that happened in in the families. You know, so the boundaries of space and time, meaning between work and family has been blurred so the boundaries are blurred because you're at home and then you don't know if you have to attend to you know the domestic uh, uh, situation bring out the trash or the dog is there or but then you have to attend to students you have to teach you know so somehow that's difficult you know you have your mind is torn and that's very stressful especially if our mind you know we're, we're not if you've heard studies about uh, Multitasking, it's not really very efficient. Uh, uh, it, like, for example, you say, hey, sir, how about driving? Uh, but because you can automate certain things. If, if things are automated, then you don't need to focus on that. What, what I'm saying is that if you can only focus on one thing at a time. But, uh, well, I guess the mothers go on. No, they, they say that while they're cooking, they're doing this and doing that. But, of course, their focus is just on one thing. It's at the back of their head. They have those things to keep in mind. But... That's also one thing, you know, if we have a lot of things to focus on, then we can be so stressed. And especially now when you can easily open tabs, diba? Yung mga notifications, emails, messages, all sorts of things that could, you know, catch our attention. And then going back to our work, it takes more effort kasi where did they take off again? So again, we will exert effort and then work on, the, on, on what we're doing again. Now, it's not very apparent that we actually get stressed. Um, by shifting work, you know, going back to what we're doing. And it's evident because people are stressed with, you know, uh, what they're doing, not only teachers, but also students. Everyone, you know, working in, in the computer if they're not focused, no. The other idea also is the public bleeds into the private, you know. So what, 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 what's supposed to be very private at home, it gets influenced by, you know, all sorts of other things you know, outside, no. And that's why... I really like it that you know you're 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 back there you know at home. Now let me just pass to this stress and anxiety because um, they're somehow similar. Uh, uh, but uh, well, anxiety is more of if you remove the stress or then the stress is still there. That's uh, more of the anxiety. You know? The stress is more mo mostly uh, how we think. Eh? No. Okay, if you suspect that someone may have anxiety disorder, consult a mental health professional can consult a psychologist or a counselor. And I have here um, online consultations, some psychiatrists and then psychologists. Dr. Violeta V. Bautista is a professor of mine in, in UP. Um, she's very good. You know? um, and then there's also this website. I can um, share this slide with um, Engineer Carpina later. And then here also a list of organizations that offer pre-counseling services online or via call. So the one in Visayas here is University of San Carlos. And then Western Visayan Psychosocial Support for COVID-19. So I'll post this also uh, later. Now, coping with stress. Now, this is where you try to see how you can cope. No, In mild stress and mild anxiety, similar coping mechanisms can be done, such as exercise, you know, uh, and then proper diet and good sleep. Exercise, uh, yeah, maybe it's a challenging diet. No, that's another talk probably because Ang principal ko lang dito, out of sight, out of mind. If you don't see the food here, then chances are you won't be eating the food. So put them aside where you can see them. Good sleep is also important. So it takes a lot of discipline. No? So it, it 
might appear so this is very typical you, you, you we don't have to be in quarantine to be able to you know do, uh, do this you know uh but that's important those are the basic things no but there are other ways to cope we have this faith-based distress busting program called breakthrough a friend of mine actually dr gabby diliaco is one of the founders of this i'll share again this link but this one is paid yet if they have like three day um they have a three day uh, free trial no but uh, uh, but if you want, if you know, if you want to subscribe to them, then you know I'll I'll share this link as well. And then optimal works. There's this video that I really like. Uh, there's this um, psychiatrist named Dr. Kevin Majors, um, Maharis. That's 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 how they pronounce his name. Majors. He's teaching in the Harvard School, Harvard Medical School. He said that he described anxiety as an emotion, an emotion of fear, as some people see it. And then it's just, anxiety is just adrenaline that you view negatively. So it's like adrenaline. When we have adrenaline, it pushes us into action, you know, like to um, fight or to, you know, push ourselves uh, harder, you know. Now, anxiety is like that potential, it's like that adrenaline that, you know, makes us feel anxious. What he's saying is that transform that anxiety into something that will propel us into action. So I feel this, uh, okay, so maybe I need to do some push-ups probably. Or I wanted to uh, work harder, okay? Or maybe I have to focus on uh, writing, okay? Or reading, okay? So that, that's how he sees it. Eh? So, but again, it depends on each person. So I'll, again, uh, this is like maybe 15-minute uh, YouTube video. Now, I'm placing this here because during the quarantine, one of the companies that I know uh, adjusted the their... Uh, uh, what do you call this? Their products. Uh, and now one of the most affected um, companies are textile. I mean, clothing companies because you know, we don't go out you know, so since we're just at home. So I think sales of clothes uh, went down. But they have to be creative. So they, have, they started selling their caps but with uh, face shields, you know. So that's, that's how it is. Some people see this as an opportunity. You know? So that's how they also cope with stress. So stressed, what do you get if you reverse stress? You get desserts, no? Kaya nandiyan yung ice cream. Okay, now, this is one way to cope. I guess everyone knows about uh, scheduling. And, you know, this is also something that you can help students with, not to schedule. Especially students who have, you know, like, uh, relatively free time. This is one of the problems I see among first-year students who go to college when their high school class is very structured, diba? Uh, first period, second period, third period, break, and then, you know, Everything's so structured for them uh, that, you know, uh, they know what to do at that time. But when they go to college, then they realize they only have like three classes, four classes a day. They have a lot of free time. They end up uh, going out. They, they, they use their, their, their free time to uh, go out with friends or talk, which is actually good. But uh, later on, they realize, sir... We have a lot of requirements pala, so I should have used my free time to study. And I would tell them, yeah, okay, use your free time to study. But at the same time, don't also forget that you need time to rest. It's good to know your classmates. So that's why a schedule is very important because you can put in there the things that you have to do and the things that you want to do. So if you schedule them. Because if you don't schedule them, let's say, I'd say, Ay, no, I'm so tired, I want to play video games. Now, what happens? We end up playing video games like for three, four, five, six, seven hours. Don't be surprised. No, some students they do that. But if you schedule them, you say that okay. Anyway, I have my rest later, my video game for one hour later. So we will not feel deprived. Because if you feel deprived, sometimes what happens is we overdo it, eh, diba? Yung compensation, the compensation becomes like double, or you know, and then it it comes out of hand. So that's why it's important that we schedule them. You know, we have a schedule, and then. That helps. So that, that putting a schedule uh, uh, helps. But uh, again, I, I advise you it's not to be too strict with the schedule. The idea of a schedule is to help them do the things that they have to do. Uh, at, and, uh, you know, if you're, uh, I mean, to do as much as you can, okay, without, you know, taking at all in yourself and then doing them well also. So that's the thing. Sometimes you can overbook things and end up, you know, uh, moving some things the following day, that's okay, you know. So planning. So not only a schedule, daily schedule, a weekly schedule, but we have to plan also at the end of the semester, what do I want to achieve, you know, or at the end of the year, what are my goals? Because it gives us direction. Eh? So it, it would help if we have certain, you know, plans also. Now, 
the thing that pandemic removed from us is that sense of control because we cannot just freely go out. We cannot talk to people. We cannot visit the places we want to visit, the people we want to visit. No, we have lost that control. But the thing is, we can focus on what we can control now. Like, uh, how, to, how do we speak to ourselves? We can control that. Our sleep routine. Okay, we can also control asking for, for help. Don't, don't hesitate to ask for help. And what we eat, sometimes it's going to be more difficult, no? but that's something that we can control, okay? And also this one, I'm, I'm glad that the students are asked to, to wear the uniform. Because our clothes kasi reflect also um, our disposition. And me, I also uh, wear uh, like barong or long sleeves. Every day, even if I'm on sabbatical leave, because I have that sense that I am working. Because I'm in my work, I'm in my uh, if I'm wearing clothes for the house, my mentality is I want to rest, I want to sleep, I want to, you know, lie around. It's not serious work. So, wearing uh, clothes, uh, corporate clothes, is also good uh, to have that sense of work. So that the boundary, remember the, the, the boundaries are more, you know, uh, set that hey i'm here i'm working and that's why also uh yeah then avoiding fake news because this, this could be stressful so limiting uh, our contact with uh uh social media now the thing with social media also is while we are avoiding certain news we want to get in touch with other people also and that's good you know to get in touch with people because something that we have lost also although it's not the same but it's good to you know, like check up on people uh, every so often Self-care is important. What we do to take care of ourselves, especially teachers. You're in a helping professional. Eh? You know, you're helping students, you're helping other people. So we have to take care of ourselves also. Uh, then what do we do to take care? So put that in our schedule also, you know. So it's good that, you know, uh, Engineer Capino was saying that uh, you have your cycles. You have like seven days per cycle. You have four cycles in a, in a quarter. And you have two breaks in between, okay? So it's good that you have those two breaks and, you know, things, you know, turn out better. And it's good. That, and that's also one thing. Listen to ourselves. It, you know, he, he, the engineer Philip was also saying that he listens to people to get feedback. We have to listen to ourselves also. Am I tired or am I... Of course, we have to balance it. I, I might become too lazy, so I might end up being irresponsible. But we have to listen to ourselves also. What do we need, you know? We should not come to a point where we're so exhausted giving ourselves, you know? That, that, that should not be. We have to take care of ourselves. We are responsible for that, you know, to take care of ourselves. So that we may be able to continuously, you know, serve, serve others. Now, volunteering work also is important. If we have time, volunteering uh, is actually good for our mental health. Uh, there's a lot of studies on altruism or self-giving. That's also good. So helping out if we could, you know, in, in, in where I'm staying right now, uh, we have had uh, outreach. We, uh, we have students who raised funds. Uh, to provide masks, uh, uh, we call the, uh, we call this uh, PPEs, uh, alcohols for a certain barangay nearby, and then we also gave donations to an orphanage, you know, because they they also have very uh, they have less people giving donations now eh, because uh, because of the economic uh, effects of of COVID. So uh, helping others. Ah, before I forget, also. Be mindful also of the people around us because they have their own battles also. They have their own challenges as well. So the people around us at home or even they're in school, let's also be mindful that, you know, people also have, uh, you know, their challenges. And let's recognize that. Let's recognize that as well. Now sleep is very important. There's a lot of study on sleep that, you know, that it affects not only physically, but it also affects emotionally because during sleep, that's when our... Remember the chemicals I told you when we are very angry or when we are very sad? Those chemicals are cleansed when we sleep. And that's why when we wake up, we're more objective. Diba? Sometimes when we're emotional, itulog lang natin yan. And then the following day, we feel better. Okay? So that's important. Uh, one thing about sleep is that it, it's good to wake up at the same time every day. That's, that's uh, one of the suggestions that was given. And then oversleeping is not good, especially for students. You tell your students... It's not good to oversleep, like sleeping for 10 hours. No. Lost sleep is lost sleep. It's like time. You cannot save 10, 10 minutes a day to come up with, let's say, 50, 15 extra minutes at the end of you know, a week, five days. You know, that's, not, that's not how time goes. Right? You cannot save time. You can use it at the, uh, on the weekend. No, sleep is also, it's not something that you know, uh, I lost, let's say, 
two hours, then I can just like sleep for 10 hours, no. So lost sleep is lost sleep. I mean, you, there are a lot of other literature on sleep. You can talk more about that. Sunlight is very good because it uh, helps our body produce vitamin D. That is good for our immune system. So exposing ourselves to light will somehow activate certain chemicals in our body to produce vitamin D. So early morning sunlight is good. No? And of course, diet is very important. I've been exercising since uh, I think April of last year. And I have never been really, uh, you know, exercise buff, you know. Uh, I, 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 and I'm to this every other day, and it feels good. Because me, as a, as a counselor, I have to be mentally healthy also. I told you about, you know, that incident when I shouted at someone, and I have to, I'm also affected by this. And exercise is one of the things, one of the ways that helped me cope with this um, situation, exercise. And if you're not into that, try something else, you know. Um, maybe plant or a plant you know try planting if that's what's helpful for you or probably painting or i also started learning how to play the guitar you know so there are other ways to to help ourselves you know now the next um activity here we have a short activity is breathing it's a short way easy way to help us calm down to help us relax you know? so if you can imitate this guy you know so you put your left hand into your chest and then your right hand just in front of your belly button and then we have to breathe slowly there are different kinds of breathing they they have the four seven eight breathing or four eight eight so they're different uh ways but the important thing here is that we take in breath slowly being mindful of the air entering holding it for a few seconds and then exhaling it longer than the inhale. No? So, so the idea here is, let me just demonstrate it first. No? So you put it here. If you want, you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable about it. So inhale slowly. And then hold it for a time, for a few seconds. And then exhale through the mouth slowly. So, okay, so if, if I, I can see you right now, no, what I can see in front of me is my presentation. But if you want to do this, let's try this three times. So put your hand uh, on your chest, your left hand, and your right hand on your, in front of your belly button. The right, prop, the right kind of breathing, though, is when the, uh, it, it is not when our shoulders rise. It's supposed to be when our stomach expands because the inflammation of the lungs, uh, inflammation, the inflation of the lungs, they have to go that way. Eh? So for for the for you, the one taking care of the choir, I think you know, I think uh, they have the, the right way of breathing. It's a choir, you no. Know? So 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 if we can do that, you know, so that it's the belly button that in, that that inflates, you no. Know? So let's do this uh, together. So three times. So at my count. So when I say when I count to three, so inhale, you no. Know? One, two, three. Inhale. And then hold it for a few seconds. Three, two, one. And slowly exhale through your mouth. Trying to expel all the air you can from your lungs. Okay. Now again, another inhale. Take a deep breath and trying to notice the air passing through your nostrils to our lungs. And then holding it. Three, two, one. And then exhale slow to your mouth. We'll do this one more time. Inhale. Hold. And then exhale slowly. Okay. So hopefully that somehow helped you um, relax a bit. You've seen people sigh, but then... They do that right? sometimes. That's a way to relax because it's another way for the oxygen to um, come in. Now, the thing is, we need to regulate our breathing because when we're stressed, our breathing is shallow. Parang shallow breathing, ganyan, no? So we're not able to maximize the exchange of oxygen uh, and carbon dioxide in our body. So that's why this breathing is actually good physiologically. No? We have also guided imagery. Uh, I'm not sure if I have time for this, no? but... It's when, especially when we are cluttered with a lot of things. Look at this you know, glass of glitters. So our mind is cluttered with a lot of things. You know, maybe our neurons are firing one after the other and have a lot of things in mind. 
what kind of imagery does is that it tries to settle you know all those thoughts by focusing on certain things no there are a lot of materials on guided imagery there's one for sleeping for relaxing uh, even for uh, and medical concern like cancer um they, they have used this uh, for for that so uh, uh No, going back, so this is to ask you earlier about two things. Now, one is identify your stressors and know how to cope stress. Okay? And that's it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, you, uh, you can probably ask me, put it in there. I don't know how you can, you know, you can let me know your questions. So that's it.